Hey family, it's your boy AD for you smart and intelligent folks out there. It just simply means Ed. I have a quick question for you. Maybe it might even be a statement. Have you ever envisioned yourself as a leader who could steer a team through challenges and triumphants? Because I have to tell you, family, leadership is just not a title. No, it's not. It's actually a set of skills that transforms your project management journey. If you're new to the channel, I've already introduced myself, but I'm going to do it again because I'm just feeling great today. I apologize, but I don't apologize. My name is ED for all you smart and intelligent folks. That simply means Ed. Today's episode is entitled How to Develop Leadership Skills. Again, how to De develop leadership skills. I have a seven point framework in which I have seven items we're going to discuss. And then after that, psh, I'm out. Let's go into point number one, cultivate self-awareness. See, when you're developing your leadership skills, you got to understand what am I strong at, what am I weak at, and what are my values that will allow me to be, that will create my foundation to be an authentic leader. So for me, I'll give you an example, family. When I started understanding leadership even more and more, I was trying to be like every other leader. I was trying to uh, sound like Les Brown or sound like Eric Thomas or deliver a speech like Steve Jobs. And I was like, that's not me. But what if I could take a little piece of each one of them that I really like about each one of those uh, people that I just named and add it to my own style and deliver it in my own style? Now I'm authentic. Now I am my own version of me. I am not what they say, a copycat or back in the day, they would say a Xerox copy. So with that being the case, family, we have to develop and cultivate a self-awareness and I'll tell you there's there's ways to identify self-awareness about who you are you can ask your peers your colleagues your, your you know your leadership you could also take a personality test I, I love taking personality tests to see kind of my progression uh, one of the one of my favorite ones is the strength finder by 2.0 also, some of the disc assessments I really love the disc I actually like the disc assessments more but that's subjective I mean a personality test Really, it depends on how in depth you would like to go will allow you to really understand more about yourself. And that's important, family, especially as you are developing your leadership skills. Point number two, master, you know where I'm going with this, master communication. Listen, I never think you'll be a master of communication because as, con as communication continues to shift and drive, I'll tell you a little story. I remember the story that I heard where it was a college professor and he was uh, conducting a class and he felt he wasn't getting the energy that he was used to seeing in his previous classes. So he, he began to experiment. And one of the things is he noticed that there really wasn't that collaboration and people talking. So he just picked two random students out of the, uh, out of the class and had them come down and just have a conversation. And there was a, it was a slight struggle and he was, he was confused. He said, hmm. So he said, this is what I'll do. He took two chairs. He said to him, he said, I want you guys to sit with your back to each other. And as they sat with their back to each other, he said, now I want you to pull out your phone and you guys talk that way through text message. And they were able to talk fluently. And so I say all that to say, family, that there is going to be times where you may have to text. You may have to be verbal. You may have to be able to communicate at a um, through email or through letter. So you mastering communication, I don't believe that you can ever master communication, but I do believe you can continue to build your uh, toolbox, uh, or as I call it, your communication toolbox to be able to be adaptable in any situation. So if it's a verbal uh, type of situation, you're able to articulate yourself well. If it's a written, you're able to write really well. Whatever that thing is, you're able to build that. So building effective communication, it builds trust and it, fo and it fosters strong team connections. Point number three, sharpen decision-making. Listen, family, um, I borrowed this from Myron Golden when he talked about choice and decision. You know, a choice um, is, and I'm remixing it, a choice is flimsy. It's like, oh, well, it's sort of like when somebody say, hey, I'll try and call you. Like, okay, well, let's 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 go re revisit what Les Brown said. He said, when, when you get ready to sit down, you don't try and sit down. Either you sit down or you don't. And so, family, that's what we have to understand is, is that when we make a decision, 
we need to move forward with that decision and be willing to pivot and be adaptable or, or whatnot. But when you make a choice, it's like, to me, it's like, oh, well, I'm choosing to do that versus I've decided that I want to do this. You see the difference? You see how the decision, when you say I decided, sounds clearer. It sounds like you have a path. It sounds like you're going somewhere. A choice is like you can throw the, the arrow at the dartboard and it can hit anywhere and you're happy. So when you're developing and working on your decision making, understand that being able to make informed, timely decisions will continually to help grow you in whatever career you're, you're into. But hopefully you're in this career where we love and what we call project management. Let's go on to point number two, embrace adaptability. If you haven't been paying attention, and I know you have because I have a, a very smart uh, audience out there. And I call you guys my family, not the audience. But it's really being able to embrace adapt adaptability. Can, can you be adaptable? When things are not going the way that you know they should go go on your project, can you be adaptable to adjust what will work for the team and then grab the team of where they're at and pull them up with you? I'll be honest, I'll be the first one to raise my hand. I am guilty of this. I am so guilty because I'll, I'll get frustrated because you know, as I, as I uh, shared with you before, the reason why I'll get frustrated is because I have a certain expectation. I believe if I do what I'm supposed to do, you're supposed to do what you're supposed to do, that it shouldn't be about me driving, it should be about me leading and so when you're, I had to learn this and I'm still constantly learning it to make me a better leader is being a I'm very adaptable in LA areas, but when you say you're going to deliver something and you don't, can I be adaptable to jump in, jump in and not look at the surface, but look at the root of why you're not delivering? Is it something personal? Is it just, you just don't really care or are you being pulled in so many di different directions? It's hard to stay focused to make to, to be able to deliver that deliverable that but that you need. Let's move on to point number five. One of my favorites: empower your team. Listen, family, when you're leading a project, you're work you're with that team the majority of the the project, unless you know unless it's a phased approach or there's you know there's team members coming in and out because of the fact that based on your particular project, but being able to empower your team by inspiring them, by celebrating their achievement, by doing it just not in private, but also doing it in public and copying their manager or, or uh, basically their manager on an email that you may send out and want to give kudos. But I think that's a lost art. Everyone think it's, it's always money and it's some, sometimes it is, you know, but sometimes it's also I want to be appreciated. You know, I love what I, I don't know who told who said this. So if I, I apologize, but I, I heard someone say, I'd rather go where I'm celebrated than where I'm tolerated. Mm. Let me tell you why that's so powerful, because when you are celebrated, you're encouraged to do better. You're encouraged to make mistakes. You're encouraged to fail, because if you look at failing, it's not I think I, I, I take from a purpose of if you fail, that doesn't mean you're a failure. What it is, is you learn that this is not going to work or this, you may need to, to be adaptable, embrace the adaptable uh, mindset or basically being able to pivot. So family, I challenge you to empower your team, celebrate your teams, tell them how much you appreciate them and be authentic about it. Don't just be saying it just to be saying it because you know, it sounds good, but no, really mean it and put and continue and be consistent with it. Point number six, having the ability to navigate conflict. Again, like I said, I truly believe in this thing uh, we love called project management. Conflict is not one of the highest priority that are discussed. We talk about communication. We talk about this, you know, your scheduling. We talk about leadership, but conflict, meaning healthy conflict and toxic conflict. I wasn't going to say negative. I'm saying toxic because toxic conflict, meaning that this person is in is definitely trying to do something to your project to make sure it's not a success because either it's something to do with you that they don't like you or they don't agree with how you're leading the project or it's just they're not happy that they have to be here they would rather be somewhere else like on the beach no i'm just playing fast but seriously being able to have the ability to um, step in front of conflict meet conflict head on that would take you further than any skill set that I've named here because of the fact that you're willing to address the problem and not only just address it, but find solutions. And sometimes not everybody is going to win in this proposed solution. And also you may have to get people off your team that 
you know, that are not delivering as they say they were. All right, last and final point, uh, family, and my favorite again, I know I have so many favorites, but it's just, I just really, truly love this thing called project management. Embracing lifelong learning. One of the things I love about what PMI does and most um, certifications, but really PMI, uh, to, to maintain and sustain your PMP, you need 60, and I do mean 60, PDUs. That acronym stands for Pro Professional Development User Units. And I'm going to say something else here too, family. Stay curious. Like, we got to get back into that inner child and, 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 and bring that inner child up to stay curious and ask, why? Like, why are we doing it that way? Well, we've always done it that way. Well, why? So I, I challenge you, family, to make a commitment to personal and professional growth. And then when you, when you make that commitment, start leading by example. I'm not asking you to be perfect. I'm not asking you to be um, uh, crystal clean and a squeaky image. I'm not asking any of those things. I'm asking you to lead by example. Until next time, this has been your boy, E.D. I'm out.